everybody, uh, welcome to another puppet making tutorial. Um, if you haven't done our first one, the little flappy bird, I would suggest that you do that first as it's a little bit simpler than this one, so it's a good one to start with. Today we are going to be making a very simple moving mouth puppet like this dude here. It is a bit fiddly. Um, it's probably not suitable for small children, certainly not to do on their own, but you might be able to do it with a helpful adult. Uh, adults, I think you'll find this fun on your own. You need paper, scissors, sellotape, and actually for the last sort of finishing touches, you probably do need some Pritt stick or some double-sided sellotape. You need to print off four pieces of paper for this one. And you will find that you have six pieces in total. As with the bird, we have done sort of helpful markings for you. So the straight lines are the cutting lines, the dotted lines are the folding lines, but the kind of long dots like this are sticking guides. So where you stick something to. Start off, cut everything out. Be very careful when you're cutting out that you don't cut the little tabs off because they're really important. So you should have six pieces. The main piece for the face, the two top and bottom of the beak, this is the top, this is the bottom of the beak. The actual kind of middle of the mouth. And then two rectangle pieces, the finger loop and the thumb loop. So we're actually going to start off with these. So the finger loop is what, it, what you think it might be. It's a loop for your fingers to go through when you're operating the puppet. To make it the right size, you basically want the two fingers in the middle of your hand there to be able to fit comfortably in the loop with a little bit of room for moving around in there too. So once you've got that and you're happy, stick it together and you want to stick on the outside and on the inside just to make it nice and secure the inside. Always a little tricky. Oops, that was proven right there. There you go. And then same thing with the thumb loop. So as again suggested, it's obviously the loop that your thumb is going to go through. Again, you want a little bit of room around the thumb. And we do the same thing here with that one. So stick on the outside. And if you can get in there just a little bit carefully on the inside too. Good. So you should have two loops. Now we take the middle of the mouth piece. And we're going to do the first fold, so along this middle line here. You want to fold so that these dotted lines are showing at the top and the bottom. So fold along the middle, again using a table to get a nice crisp edge, like we did with the bird. So the larger bit is the top and the uh, smaller bit is the bottom. So onto the larger bit we're going to stick our finger loop, because that's where our fingers are going to go through. You want to use this long dotted line as a sticking guide for your loop. So place the loop with the kind of back of the loop against that dotted line uh, there. Can you see? Okay. So we stick that down. And you want to go, you want quite a lot of tape really to do this. It doesn't matter if you have to take the tape over the fold, just make it nice and tidy so that you're not blocking that. Um, so one through that way, one again through the other way. And then once it's stuck down like this, in order that this doesn't pull away, you really want to put some extra tape over this one and over that one. I'm running out of tape, so I'm not going to do that. But in order to keep it secure, that's what you want to do. Same thing for the thumb loop on the bottom. So you want to line up again the back of the thumb loop with the dots like this. And then stick. So again, through the top, like that, through the other side. And again, as I said before, you want to put another piece across there and across there to stop this from coming away. And then you will have finished your middle bit. Just give it a little bend, make it nice and flat. This tape sometimes tends to pull it away. So it should then move nicely like this. Next step, the beak. So we're gonna do the top beak first. First thing, on these, you will see that there is one more cutting line. So we're going to do that. Just cut straight up. Don't go any further than the line. Try and be as accurate as you can. That will help. And then we've got our sticking line again. So you're going to be taking this side and folding it around to meet the sticking line like this. 
try and be as accurate as you can. It helps for it to fit to the mouth bit later. So you want to stick that on the top and then you also want to stick it underneath because again, otherwise it will start to come apart. So we're then going to do the same thing with the bottom. You have a cutting line here, same thing. Cut as accurately as you can. And then once you've done that, folding this to meet the sticking line there. Nice bit of tape on the top and same thing on the underside. Oh, yeah. Folding next, so the little tabs, you want to fold them under. So just to get them ready, just a little pinch. Doesn't have to be loads, don't need to kind of make too crisp a fold here. Just a little pinch on each one just to get them into the roughly the right position. This bit is the fiddliest bit probably of the whole tutorial. So you have to bear with me. It might take me a moment to get things into the right position. So this is our top. So it's gonna be going on like this here. To get it there, the first thing you wanna do is we've done a little helpful, hopefully dot guide on here. You want to make sure that the middle one of these lines up with the dot. So this is going over the top like this. And you are trying then, turn it over I would, because it's the easier way to see it. It's difficult for me to show you, but you're going to, you'll be able to see that dot through the other side. And you want to line up that middle tab with that dot. Pinch that down and then stick it. Again, use a decent helping of tape so that it goes either side of the tab, otherwise it will start to come away. Next tab then, we should be able to align all of the next ones from that point. So marking, pushing the mouth into the fold like that, and then doing a pinch, and then sticking. And we're gonna keep doing that for all of the others. So again, you wanna push that fold into the jaw, uh, into the mouth bit like that there, can you see? And then pinch and stick. This is a little laborious. Again, pushing it in, pinch and stick. Here we are. Hope you're having a nice day. It's not quite so sunny in our studio today. Here we are, pinch and stick. We're nearly there. It doesn't matter if it's slightly bending round with it, we can kind of bend it back in a minute. So don't worry about that. Push into the fold, pinch and stick. And again, final one. Pushing into the fold like that, pinch and stick. So it should look something like this. It will bend a bit, it's paper, it's not card. So it's not gonna be as stable, but you can bend it back. You just push it with your fingers and there's your top beak. We're doing exactly the same thing then with the bottom. So first things first, get our little tabs into the right position. So just giving them a little pinch on all of them so that we've already begun that fold. Like that, all the way around. Same thing again, using the dot on the middle there. That's our center point. That's where we're gonna try and put the middle tab. So same thing, you should be able to, as I said, once you sort of turn it upside down, you should be able to see that dot through on the other side, find that centre point, get that centre tab into pretty much the right place and pinch the stick. And then we're going to do the same thing all the way around. So pushing your mouth into your fold, pinch and stick. It sounds like some kind of weird little motto or something. Has anyone seen Legally Blonde? It's a bit like the bend and snap. But quite a lot less fun, I suppose. Anyway, carry on doing it. Push it in, pinch and stick. Children, if you're not old enough, don't watch that down. Next one, push that in, pinch and stick. We're nearly there now, everybody. This is the fiddliest bit and it does take the longest time. But once we've done this, we then have our beak mouth ready and we can put the face on. There we go, final one, pinch and stick. 
Now you should find you have top and bottom jaw complete. Give it a little bit of a wiggle and there we are. So the next bit is our face. Here we are, first things first, stick this together. You've got two guidelines on here, doesn't matter which one you use. Match the, mark, uh, line up the edge of the paper with the sticking line on either side. As I said, doesn't matter which, there's two guides. Depending on which one you would prefer, you can use that one. Take some sellotape, stick it at the bottom here, give yourself enough of an overlap so that you can just fold it under like that. Keep it nice and neat, keep it together. Same thing for the top bit there. Nice long piece of tape, good overlap, and stick it down. And then to keep it nice and secure, you can also just pop one in the centre. These folds are going the other way from our beak because they're going to, this is going to sit on top of it. So we want to bend them up just quickly. Again, it doesn't have to be really crisp fold, just a quick pinch will do it. One more fiddly bit now to get this attached to this. So we want to align this, this bit here, if you can see, with the back of the, the back of the top of the top of the beak, this corner here. So you'll see that if you do it, just with a slight overlap, probably just a few millimetres, I'm trying to show you, it should be about like that. That's where you then put your first tab. So that they should both line up like that. I'm gonna show you now that that's stuck again. That's lined up with that. Do the same thing on the other side first before we stick the middle ones, it makes it easier. So again, just a slight overlap, just a few millimeters really, um, lining the two things up as best you can. It is quite fiddly. There we go. And sticking that down. Then finally, we should be able to just stick our middle ones, give them a bit of a tug, not too hard. Obviously, we don't want to rip the paper, but it's relatively sturdy. And then the last one there should be able to stick down. So you should now, mine's a little rushed, so it's a little bit bent, but you can see the shape that we should have. Finally, finishing touches, we've given you a few little guides that you can use to decorate your bird, I guess, moving mouth puppet. There are various eyes and a couple of hairstyles that you can use. Obviously, at this point, you can easily draw your own on. We don't suggest that you have to use our cartoony eyes. I've chosen these slightly sleepy eyes to put on, so I'm just going to show you. I popped a bit of blue tack on these, in fact. But obviously, if you want them to stick for good, you'd use uh, double-sided sellotape or Pritt stick or something like that. So there they are. Sleepy, sleepy dude. Um, here. Oh, wrong way around. Beg your pardon. There you go. Some hair. I would stick this on the inside rather than the out. Uh, otherwise, it might flop forward. Um, so, I mean, you might want that. You might want a sort of floppy hairstyle. Who knows? But sticking on the inside. There you go. It's already getting some personality now, I think. You can also put eyebrows on. I've got some here. They're a bit fiddly actually to stick with blue tuck, but you get the picture. So there you are. Your very own, pretty simple, if a little bit fiddly, moving mouth, bird type puppet. If you do want to actually use this puppet to practice puppeteering a moving mouth puppet, I would suggest that you make the inner mouth out of cardboard. You can use the template and draw around a pizza box card, that's our favourite, uh, or cereal box or whatever, it'll just make it a little bit sturdier and then you can actually practice. If you are wanting to practice, the way you operate a moving mouth puppet is you move the thumb like this within the puppet. We can do a tutorial on actually how to puppeteer another time if people are interested. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Please do share it around if anyone you know might like to have a go at making it. Leave us a comment, leave us a like. Uh, we're on all of our social medias at Box Tail Soup. And uh, we'd love to see you there.